How's it going, Facebook? Christina here streaming live from my terrace here in Madrid. I hope you guys had fun checking out my video uh, last week at the Chinese New Year Parade. Um, it was super fun bringing you guys kind of behind the scenes uh, to check that out. I love showing off a little bit of the culture and the parades and the stuff that uh, Madrid does here because it is super, super fun. Um, but this week I am bringing you guys a little bit of a category on some games that you can play with adults, some ESL games. So as you know, I teach um, in company, so I teach adults uh, private classes one-to-one -one or and also group classes. So um, these five games that I'm going to go over with you guys today, um, feel free to use them, tailor them as you want. Um, really, the, the purpose of the games is really uh, to to make sure, of course, one, first and foremost, that your students are learning, but also that they have fun. And you can actually have fun and play games with adults, too, I promise. So the very first one is called the Alphabet Quiz. And I actually just played this yesterday with a group of my students. Um, basically, what it is is it's a trivia game uh, designed for adults. So um, I found a set of questions already made, but you can tailor the questions however you want. You can add in your own. Um, you can make them harder, easier, whatever you'd like. But basically, you have the alphabet, A through Z. And for each letter of the alphabet is uh, basically the answer to one of the questions. So let's say we're on the letter F, and the question is, who was the lead singer of the band Queen? Hopefully, where your student will guess, Freddie Mercury. If not, they have the option to pass if they don't know it, or they can take a guess. Now, if they guess and get it wrong, they lose a point. But if they guess and get it right, they gain a point. So it's up to them. Uh, basically, it's a competition to the end to see who can get the most points and uh, and uh, who's declared the winner. So it's a lot of fun. It's a great way to introduce um, geography, history, uh, pop culture. Um, honestly, anything goes. Uh, so it's really, really fun to make up your own questions. All right, the second game that I like to play along with the alphabet is um, it's called the A through Z game. And it's similar in a sense that you use the alphabet, however, it's just one word, um, uh, one word, and it's not an actual um, answer to a question or anything like that. So the way it is, it's basically a quick and fun vocabulary game. I usually like to play this one as a warmer. Um, it's super ideal to start the class, but you can insert it wherever you want, maybe at the end of the day, totally up to you. It's also really great to introduce a topic. So for example, um, basically how you play is you have the alphabet, you have them write A through Z all the way down. And then for each letter of the alphabet, if maybe they're a beginner level, you can um, you can basically just have them use any word that begins with that letter. So for example, A, is apple, uh, B, balloon, whatever. Um, and the first one to finish uh, uh, wins the game. So they say stop and, and, and they're the winner. Um, for your more advanced students, what I like to do is I like to set a theme. Um, and the crazier the theme, the crazier the responses, so it's really fun. Uh, but one of the themes can be maybe things you take on uh, vacation or what you see around an office. I don't know, something like that. And again, same thing, uh, they would put uh, a word for the first letter of the alphabet. So the first one to finish um, wins the race, and it's always great to kind of hear everybody's responses. If anybody had the same repeats, I usually don't count them. Um, but, but yeah, the more creative they are, the better. So love that one. Um, my third game that I recommend, uh, depending on your students and how comfortable you are with them, but I love, love, love playing uh, King's Cup. Uh, if you're familiar with King's Cup or Ring of Fire, if you're from the States, it's a typical drinking game, actually. Um, but basically, it's a lot of fun um, for each uh, different card. Uh, there's a, usually a set rule or thing you have to do to it with that card. Um, so, for example, we'll play Never Have I Ever if they pick up a, a queen or Would You Rather questions, um, categories, uh, Two Truths and a Lie, um, Ace, Make a Rule, things like this. So it's super fun. You definitely have to explain it to them pretty well at the beginning and monitor the game pretty well because uh, likely they've never played it. Um, and obviously we're, we're not drinking, but it is super, super fun uh, just to see how they do and really just to kind of keep keep the conversations going. Um, they actually have a lot of fun with that one. So King's Cup uh, is a great one to play. Again, you can make up your own um, rules or categories or whatever you'd like for each card. 
Uh, but you will need a deck of cards for that one, so just FYI. The next game I like to play um, that I have here actually next to me is called Loaded Questions. Um, so this was given to me by a friend, um, but if you are still living abroad or even you can, I'm sure you can get this on Amazon. Um, I also recommend uh, um, any kind of card games, um, things like that, because they can be really fun in the classroom. But basically the way this one works is you have to guess which player wrote what. So there's a little card. There's several cards like this. They have to read a, the question. Um, a lot of times you might have to um, teach a little bit vocabulary, things like that, if they're not understanding the question, which is totally fine. Um, once they pick a question, then everybody uh, secretly writes on the piece of paper uh, their response. And then I usually typically, if I'm not playing, I usually read the, the answers, and then people have to guess who said what what um, so the more you get right the more points you get um, and it's a lot a lot of fun so some example questions are on, on here um, whose voice can you uh, best imitate uh, what helps you fall asleep um, really really fun game uh, I've had some crazy responses and it just makes it that much funner with my students so um, by the way all of these games and activities uh, really kind of get a sense of judgment of your students uh, if you've built a relationship with them or how are they would they actually like something like this so that's kind of how I go into a lot of my classes now I've gotten really comfortable with them so uh, it's it's fun to play these kind of games but definitely want to test that out beforehand jumping in there and playing for example cards against humanity which is also a great one uh, but again uh, definitely with some judgment there and the last one that um, I love to play more of as a conversational debate class. Um, it's called Agree or Disagree. And basically, I give them a sheet of paper with several different topics. And they have to write an A next to it or a D, depending if they agree on it or disagree. And if they can't decide, I tell them to choose a side. It doesn't matter. Um, and then basically, I have them maybe choose five of their favorite and write a response, um, just a quick why they agree or disagree with it. And then we go into a debate round. I give them a list of experiences expressions, um, things if you agree or disagree, if you want to interrupt, um, how to kind of uh, start the conversation, close the conversation, things like this. So some typical expressions, or I'll give an example of a question that I provide. Um, so maybe the question is, everyone should be required to exercise for half an hour before work or school. So they either choose to agree or disagree on that, they'll say why, and then everybody else in the classroom, um, I have them have a list of, of different expressions that they can use. The more they use, the better. So it sounds super fun, funny, but they um, really have fun with it because I have them, for each one they use, I have them check it off. Um, so that way uh, they can correct us using these other expressions than just the typical ones that they're used to. So an example expression that they probably have never heard is, um, can I throw my two cents in? Uh, or tell me about it, uh, things like this. So um, it's really fun to see the group dynamic, see how they respond to each other, um, see them interrupt each other, and uh, you can get some really heated conversations. So it's a lot of fun. Well, there you have it, guys. There's five ESL games that you can play with adults. You can also tailor them, obviously, for children. Um, I find that most games can be tailored based on level, kids, adults, whatever. You really just get to know your students and then go from there. So I hope you guys found this helpful. TT Madrid always provides um, useful blogs, and they actually have some in their archives on some ESL games as well. So you can go to ttmadrid.com to check out their blog and any other info. So thank you guys so much. I hope you have a great weekend. Bye.